Hi, I'm Steve Weiner, Microsoft MVP for Intune and Principal Architect at GetRubix. Today, we're going to look at the RoboPack platform and how it integrates with Microsoft Intune to help you manage, deploy, and package third-party applications. Let's go ahead and take a look at RoboPack. So it's a cloud-based application. You don't have to install anything, which is nice. You just can simply, uh, you can log in either with a dedicated RoboPack account, or in this case, we're going to log in with our Entry ID. So what I want to show you today is I want to show you how easy it is to integrate RoboPack into your Microsoft 365 environment. Um, plugs right into Entra. And then what we'll do is we're going to get into some of these core features right here, just to kind of give us an overview in case you haven't seen it in a while, or you're coming from another third party solution. So to connect, you click on tenants under settings. And you can see I have three tenants connected. Um, some of these are expired, so I should probably clean them out. Uh, but this is my main tenant, rubixdev.com. Basically, all you have to do to add a tenant is come up here and hit connect tenant. And then you're simply going to sign in with your Microsoft account. I'm going to use my Rubix Labs IO since I never connected that one. And you go ahead and you sign in. Okay, and you're going to be prompted to consent to all the permissions here. Uh, and it's going to go ahead and create an app reg and a service principle. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. And now there we go. My new tenant Rubix Labs is connected. And that's really uh, all there is to it. So pretty simple in terms of onboarding. It's one click. You sign in. You can't ask for anything easier than that. Okay, so going back to the main menu here, I want to go over the three core features of RoboPack. So starting with convert packages, right? Uh, they've kind of taken the headache. RoboPack's taken the headache out of packaging apps. You know, we use the Win32 tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and click convert package. And I have a folder here that I keep some apps in. So I want to do Google Chrome, right? It's something we all package. Honestly, we're kind of tired of keeping it updated. <laughs> so uh, I have the MSI right here. I'm gonna go ahead. I wanna convert that to an Intune win. And I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And of course, uh, RoboPack here is already pulling out all the details. It's got my install command, my uninstall command. Um, it's got the detection rules already set. 64-bit uh, package, it should be running as machine context, and this is everything that'll ultimately go to Intune, right? And you can even adjust advanced options. So if you wanted to edit any kind of restart behavior or return codes, you know, you can absolutely do that. I'm going to leave it simple, and I'm going to hit continue and create package. Now, I could click quick import uh, to Intune which will go ahead and post this to Intune for me for deployment. But I want to create it first because what RoboPack will do is it'll analyze the package. So after the package uploads to RoboPack before they uh, create the Intune win for me to post to Intune, they have a validation process, right? So they're going to go ahead and they have an automated backend that's going to install the app. Right, and make sure all the files are validated, make sure there's no uh, anything malicious going on. They're gonna go ahead and uh, install and launch the app, make sure it's functioning properly, make sure the install commands are right. So even if you have something uh, custom you wanna do and you wanna put in your own commands, uh, you don't have to run a test deployment necessarily in Intune first. Uh, they're gonna validate it for you. So we can see it's complete here and it, it's good to go, right, it works. So at that point, I could just click import to Intune. And if you have multiple tenants, it's really nice because you could just select the tenant you want. So I'm going to click uh, Rubix Dev and we'll go take a quick look over there. So if I go to apps and windows, I don't believe I have Chrome anymore. I don't. Let's see. Google Chrome. Nope. So I guess it's been really bothering me. So I decided to terminate it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and select that tenant. Um, and we can do additional tenants. So if you wanted to deploy this to, you know, two, three tenants at once, that's absolutely fine. It's going to give us a chance to review the import information. I'm going to leave everything alone because I was happy with it. But if there's something you want to change, you know, you can do that as well. Now I can also create deployment assignments from here. I'm going to let it do that for, for me. So it's going to create groups that I can use to assign the app to. I can make a required group available and uninstall. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's start the import. 
All right, so we can see it's importing to Intune, meaning it's building that Intune win and it's posting it for me. So this would kind of be the same process as if you were uploading it yourself and you're waiting for the package to upload when you add a Win32 app to Intune, only you don't have to do it. It's taking care of that for you because of the permissions we granted it earlier. Okay, and it says uploaded. So if I head over now, let's uh, refresh our apps and scroll down here. Ah, uh, we can see it right there, Google Chrome. Okay, and it's all ready to go. Let's look at properties. So they got the icon for us, which is always a nice touch. Uh, we have our install, our uninstall commands. The detection rules are already there. Um, but check this out. So if I go to assignments, uh, they've created the groups for us, right? And automatically put them where they're supposed to. So now if I have users or devices that I want to receive the app required, yeah, I could just put them in that group. Now we could still use our own groups, but there's so many times when we don't know who's going where that we just want to have apps for, uh, that we just want to have groups for the apps. And, and this takes care of that for us, right? So if I head over to my groups, yeah, so these are all my uh, Robopack groups that I use. And there's the Chrome ones I just created, right? Available, uninstall, and required. So really nice that they take care of this for us. Okay, so back in our core features, now I want to look at Instant Apps. Now, Instant Apps is a tremendous app catalog that, you know, we can really get anything we want here. I'm going to do a quick search for 7-Zip. And of course, you know, so many things come out to that. We can click on Instant Apps over here if we really want to take a look. I mean, there's over 30,000 applications and there's some popular ones, but we can kind of get in the weeds with it. We can look for AutoCAD, something more obscure. They have options for that. We can look at Microsoft, see what Microsoft apps they have available. They have all our redistributables. They have Microsoft Teams. We have uh, all the Visual Studios. And if you want to just hit show all, you, you can absolutely see everything that's here. Pretty much everything you can think of. I use JetBrains for development. So they have all my JetBrains apps here, like uh, one of my editors I use for Python. They do, they have pie charm here. So, I mean, so much stuff, which is great. So let's go ahead and let's look up 7-Zip. Obviously pretty popular. Um, and if we take a look at it here, so it's verified means they have vetted it and, you know, tested the package. We can see all the platforms it works on, but let's look at available versions, right? So we can see the architectures, we could see the uh, version 24.09, and we could even look at package info. So it's going to show us where it's getting it from, so we know that it's coming from the correct source. But for some reason, if you need a previous version, they give you access to that too. So you're never just stuck with the latest for some reason if you need to go back a few versions. Um, let's go ahead and hit analyze and build. Okay platform it is a msi machine scope right we can choose the different versions we want if we want the arm 64 version for some reason if we got you know newer copilot devices we're going to leave it on the default and i'm actually going to use the intune import because i'm comfortable that's already verified and i'm going to create my deployment assignment so i'm just going to hit import app and in one click what it's going to do is it's going to build the package for me create the groups and post to Intune. Okay, so there we go. Let's take a look. Same thing, right? So I didn't even have to package this myself. This is one of the many instant apps uh, that they have. Those are my groups for it. So they make it really easy to just go pick apps from their catalog. And if we want more information on it, we can go down here and, you know, take a look. Okay, the last feature we're gonna look at, which I find very powerful is RoboPatch. So with RoboPatch, what you can do is you can set these apps to automatically deploy and update across different groups. Think of it like Windows Update for Business uh, rings, right? Where you're pushing out things uh, for a small group first and then a broader maybe pilot group and then finally your whole fleet. So why don't we look at Google Chrome and let's look at this active wave here. Basically, the way I have the wave set up is the first one is set to a group called IT Pilot Computers. Now, if we take a look at this, let's edit the deployment so I can show you here. Um, these are groups that are coming from Entra. So the way I have it set is it's required to this group. They can get Toast notifications. 
I'm doing my background content download, right? But take a look down here, right? We can set a time limit for the wave. So, you know, whether that's hours or days, how long you want this pilot to go on for. Um, we're looking at response rate and success rate. So, you know, I would consider out of all the devices that it gets deployed to, I'm looking for 100% success here before I move on to wave two. And if you look at wave two, you can see we have the app pilot users group, meaning we've gone beyond IT and now we're moving to pilot users and we can set our criteria for here. I might set a longer limit. I might set a higher response rate or a lower response rate until ultimately I'm moving on to wave three, which is all my devices, right? So very, and you can add a wave as well. So if you wanted to have a wave for maybe some C level, you know, you can do that. You could just keep going and roll this out as fast or as, you know, kind of methodical as you want to. And if we want to see the status of one of our waves, so you can see I have this one in my Rubik's tenant. I only did one wave for all devices and it completed. So we're going to click on this and we can see the actual progress of it. So in this case, it was deployed to, uh, let's see, this was the assigned device. We have the success count and we can see even the history of when we hit, you know, a hundred percent. And if this were a broader group, we can easily go up, you know, you would see 60, 30, you know, things like that. So it's really nice to be able to have uh, good analytics of the deployment itself. And of course we could always hit edit deployment and add additional devices in here now that we have that. So I think it's easy to see. This is a very powerful tool for dealing with your applications and your intern deployment for your Windows PCs. Saving time on packaging apps, being able to pick from their, you know, catalog of over 30,000. And to me, one of the most important is the way they deal with the patching. You know, it makes it very easy to get a pilot and ultimately plan out the deployment for when we do, you know, update an app. Uh, so we don't have to worry about testing. We already have this method down that we know it's starting small and going broader and broader, and we can monitor the success. So it's definitely worth checking out for anyone managing, you know, third-party apps in Intune, which is pretty much everybody. <laughs> Let me know if you're using it. Let me know your thoughts on it. Uh, maybe there's some cool tricks. We're going to be covering a lot more of this uh, in the future because there's so many cool features that they're building into it. Um, that I think it's going to be really valuable uh, for us to look at it together. We'll be seeing you.